Good morning, I'm Morgan Donner and today's video is all about how to make laces for all of your medieval lacing up needs. So in a recent video I showed you all about making these hose and skipped past the actual lace making part. Figured I'd go ahead and cover that now. Uh, a lot of medieval and renaissance era clothing have these eyelets that you use to lace the clothing closed in various ways. It's nice because it's very adjustable, whereas a zipper, when you zip it up, you're stuck with that uh, length, that sizing that the zipper closes to. With a lacing, you can lace something bigger or looser depending on your needs for that day. I'll show you how to make these specific ones, but first let me talk a little bit about just lacing options in general. So jumping on in, we've got a lovely array here of different options. Starting off, I think the most accessible are ones that are already shoelaces that are available to you commercially. These are great, you can buy them online or even in a store. Of course, those plastic aglets will mean that you'll probably want to reserve using these for applications where the ends will not be visible, like a kirtle or a bodice. Shoelaces. Not a sexy option, but practical if you need laces in a pinch. For other store-bought options, we have various cotton cordages, like these, this super, super thin one here, or this thicker one. These are kind of nice because once you actually use them to lay something up, they tend to kind of scrunch up. So something that seems like it might be a little too big won't look as big once it's actually in use because of the tension of it being pulled straight. So that's something to consider. Don't necessarily count these out just because they're on the big side. If you're into garage sale shopping, you might find vintage items like this uh, 15 cent seam binding here. And these are really great. They're super, super thin, which is nice. This uh, rayon is, it's got kind of a similar look and feel to polyester without being quite as weirdly stiff and plasticky. That's because rayon's a different fiber, but we'll not get into that here. These are really great. The only downside to this specific uh, brand that I've used for a couple different things is it does tend to, uh, it's not built to take strain, right? It's meant to bind a seam nicely, but if you put a lot of stress and pressure on it and lacing it into something over and over and over, it does tend to start to fray and not look very pretty after a while, but it's, it starts out real nice and in a pinch works. In a store, you can also get various cordages. The problem with a lot of store-bought ones is they tend to be pretty thick. These ones are nice. They're, they're much thinner style, which is about the size that you would want to lace in, and you don't really want to go much bigger than this, right? These two are some that I love and have used over and over again. They're kind of an interesting, they're just twisted together fibers, but they're nice and strong, and they look good from a distance. Now getting into more handmade and honestly period correct options, I have a bunch of finger loop braids. Now remember I talked about thickness, you can see here, this is a great thickness. This is way too big for almost any lacing purpose that I would want. But it's a it was great for learning the technique. So all of these, actually all of these are something called finger loop braiding, which is one of the most amazingly documentable things that we have for medieval and uh, on laces. These are from a manuscript that shows literally exactly the pattern for braiding them together. These are made with a series of loops. These ones are messy, but you can see that it's a bunch of different loops and you would put them on your fingers and then pass them between each other to make your braid. If braiding together a bunch of loops sounds a little bit more dexterous than you quite want to deal with, there's also the great option of lucette braiding. A lucette is this little wooden or any other material, but it's, a, it's kind of like a V or Y shape, and you loop little loops <laughs> of uh, fiber around each other over and over and over again creating a thicker braid. The downside with lucette braiding is that in actuality it's one fiber or string that's being knotted over and over. It looks great when you're done and it actually doesn't look too different than some of the finger loop braids, but the down it's just not quite as strong, you know? If you were to take a string and put knots into it over and over and over, that 
doesn't really make the individual string any stronger. So it does look really good and is a great option if you have trouble with the finger loop braids. Next up for handmade is kind of similar to these ones here. You can just simply twist fibers together. Obviously, again, this is way too thick, but it'll show you nicely. It's not too different from what you might do for a rope where you're twisting fibers one way and then twisting them together the other way. Look into making twisted ropes or cords or what have you, and I'm, I guarantee you there's awesome videos out there for them. So that's one really kind of simple option for getting something done real quick. When it comes to making some of your own cords, you have some really great store-bought options in, you know, the DMC type floss. I don't recommend using a whole six strands at once because it's just, it's a little bit too thick, but this does work and it's fine. It's cotton, but it's very easily available for almost anybody and everybody. So that's why this stuff is great. It comes in a lot of colors too. If you feel like getting fancy, there's lots of people who make and sell things like this silk floss, which could be just a little, a little fancier if you're feeling, feeling extra. No matter which kind of cording that you end up choosing, pretty much all of them, except for of course the ones that already have an aglet included, you're going to want to attach an aglet to the end so that you can lace it through little tiny holes. So these guys here are aglets. These are very documentable. There's a ton of grave sites and extant items that have these, or you can find uh, just like little piles of them in people who do like metal detecting in Europe. It's great. These are very documentable, which is nice. Uh, you can also buy them online. I got these ones in particular on eBay, I think. I don't remember the seller exactly, but there, there truly are several that make basically the same thing, since this is the kind of super easy to make and again, very documentable style. So to make your very own agleted laces for your medieval and renaissance era garments, you're going to need a couple different things here. First off, you'll need whatever your cord is, and depending on your cord, you have a few different options for how to bind the ends. Super glue is going to be almost universally usable. It has some downsides. We'll talk about that. Beeswax or any other animal hide like glue is something that's going to be a more sort of period option. Obviously, super glue, less of a thing. And if you are happen to be using synthetic fibers, which I am, you can also get away with heating the ends, which will melt some of the polyester fibers. Once you've secured your ends down, you want to go ahead and sew on your aglet with needle and thread. Jumping on in, you don't usually want to start out with an end that's already starting to come apart. That's just going to create work for you. You want to have a very freshly cut end like this. If you're using flame, great. Let me do that real quick. Just a tiny bit. There we go. And don't burn yourself, but the second it's kind of cool enough to manipulate a little bit, try and squish it down. You don't want to heat this up so that it becomes a big old ball of melted plastic on the end, which is just going to make it harder to enter this. If you have a natural fiber that doesn't want to melt, then using super glue would be another good, really quick, you know, modern option. So we're going to clean this edge up with some scissors. Okay, the super glue, you have to be careful. Just a tiny, tiny bit is all you need. Just enough to slightly soak in those fibers. And then that's it. The downside with super glue is that this edge, once it is dry, is not going to want to squish down at all. It's going to be pretty solidly big, no matter what. If you wanted to use beeswax instead, you have a couple different options. If you had a heated element, like I would probably use a candle, melt it in the candle flame a little bit, and then dab it against the cord, and then sort of 
squish and smooth it into place, maybe melting it a little bit more in the candle flame. Squish, 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 squish. And that's another way that you could bind your edge. When it comes to sewing on our aglet, I like to use either thicker threads, or in this case, I'll take thin threads and just combine them together. I do like to wax my threads. It sort of forces them to stay together. There we go. So they're just they're just a little bit more likely to stay nice and happily together. There we go. With your looped end being the one that's farther out, because that's going to be our knot in a second here, I'm going to pierce. Ugh. There we go. Pierce our little bit of cord here. and then loop it through those loops. And that way we've sort of created a knot around our cord without having an actual little visible bump of a knot. Something that can help your secured ends is wrapping. So I'm just kind of gently twisting this around. There we go. So I'm going to do another pierce through here. There we go. It's not beautiful, but it works. Once you're pretty happy with your secured end, go ahead and insert it into your aglet. Although something that can help first is putting your needle through that hole and then guiding your cord in. There we go. So I've seen some people wrap their cord around and re-enter this way. So I don't like having this cord around the aglet because every time it goes in or out of an eyelet it's rubbing up against this in a way that I find displeasing. It's also, if you do this a couple times, which you should, it's going to end up being thicker right here where that cord is, and that's no good. So what I tend to prefer for just slightly better results, in, in my opinion, is to go up, back through our cord, and then out the other side. Come on. Oh no. And then back up in through that hole. Because these metal edges are relatively sharp, even if you do kind of carefully sand them down, they're still very thin. So it's easy for this edge here to cut the thread. So you don't want to go too crazy about pierce or pulling really, really tight. So we're just going to do a couple rounds here. So I'm going to go up in through the hole, but then I'm going to go down. Come on, you can do it. There we go. I'm using kind of a thicker needle so that it's nice and visible for you guys, but a thinner needle would probably be a little easier for you guys. Aha! Okay. So go ahead and toss another knot right there at the end. I don't know if you guys have seen how I like to do knots, but generally I'll wrap it around. See how this is crossing over the underneath thread? Here we go. So now what I have in my hands is just a big old knot and I'm going to make it tighter by pressing it down and then pulling. Here we go. That'll keep it up tight against the base of where I started the knot. Again, sorry about the wax. I know it's not pretty, but it'll go away once it's kind of absorbed into the fibers a bit. So pretend that's not there. Okay. Go ahead and cut that guy off. 
So if you want, you can make this aglet smaller by using a pair of pliers and just squishing this down a little bit. Squish, 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 until it's about the same size as the cord. As you can see, the aglet here is just a little bit bigger than the cord width, but that's okay. To help secure these threads in here, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put another drop of super glue in there. Not period, but very handy. Yay. And like glue is period, just not super glue. There we go. And we have a nice and secured eyelet. There is still a good chance that over time, these will wear and tear from natural use in your eyelets. It's okay. It just means that you'll cut it off right here and toss the eyelet back on or a new one. I hope you guys all found that super helpful and useful for any of your own aglet attaching uh, needs. If you don't want to use an aglet, which I admit 50% of the time, I don't bother. Uh, something that I will very often do is use something called a bodkin, which is essentially just a really <laughs> big, big needle with a nice big eye for lacing ribbon through. This gold one here is my favorite, and as you can see, they're not sharp at all. They're just pointy. These are also really good for doing hair ribbons if you ever need to at an event. You can find these in uh, craft stores or online being sold as tapestry needles, or you might see them as uh, like yarn needles. These are really great. Love these. If you're at an event and you realize that you have forgotten your bodkin, which happens, there's a good chance someone around you has a hairpin, either a bobby pin or an actual U-shaped hairpin. And what you can do in a pinch is lace your ribbon through your hairpin, and then you can lace it through that tiny little eyelet hole like this. With these, you do the same thing. You lace it through there, and then just sort of squish that little tiny end through each of your eyelet holes. So in a pinch, these will do. If there's any other things that you're curious about how to make or cludge together like I do sometimes, please do feel free to leave me a comment below and if I think that it's something I can help you with, maybe I'll make a video on it. You have a great day.